as we know it. As we light the last candle on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, we are reminded of Mary and Joseph's steadfast faith in their willingness to cooperate with God in the birth of his son Jesus. And as we light it now, may our faith in God's love for each of us be strengthened and renewed this Christmas. Welcome to Mass today on the fourth Sunday of Advent and as we said already it's focused on Our Lady and uh, the Gospel story is actually the story of the Annunciation and we know that that was the occasion when the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and asked her to become the mother of God. After all not long ago we celebrated Mary's Immaculate Conception as Word, Wordsworth said in one of his poems, she is our tainted nature's solitary boast. She wasn't contaminated by original sin like we are. So in that sense, she was a worthy person to be indeed the mother of God. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass today on the fourth Sunday of Advent, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Once David had settled into his house and the Lord had given him rest from all the enemies surrounding him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, look, I'm living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go and do all that is in your mind for the Lord is with you. But that very night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus the Lord speaks, are you the man to build me a house to dwell in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be leader of my people Israel. I have been with you on all your expeditions. I've cut off all your enemies before you. I will give you fame as great as the fame of the greatest on earth. I will provide a place for my people Israel. I will plant them there and they shall dwell in that place and never be disturbed again. Nor shall the wicked continue to oppress them as they did in the days when I appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give them rest from all their enemies. The Lord will make you great. The Lord will make you a house. And when your days are ended, and you are laid to rest with your ancestors, 
I will preserve the offspring of your body after you and make his sovereignty secure. I will be a father to him and he a son to me. Your house and your sovereignty will always stand secure before me and your throne be established forever. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will keep my love for him always. For him, my covenant shall endure. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to him who is able to give you the strength to live according to the good news I preach and in which I proclaim Jesus Christ, the revelation of a mystery kept secret for endless ages, but now so clear that it must be broadcast to pagans everywhere to bring them to the obedience of faith. This is only what scripture has predicted, and it is all part of the way the eternal God wants things to be. He alone is wisdom. Give glory, therefore, to him through Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured. The Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house forever and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too. Your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son. She whom people call barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. We've just heard the story there of the Annunciation. Now, since God has chosen to become man, he opts to be conceived, born and nurtured like every other mortal. 
He identifies wholly with the human condition. And that includes all the not so nice bits about being human, like temptation. Jesus went through temptation, didn't he? In the desert, if you remember, the first Sunday of Lent. Then he had to undergo rejection, suffering, and even death itself on the cross. And you will notice Mary was there at the conception of Jesus. Of course, she had to be there at the birth, but she's also there at the very end when he dies on the cross to show that she truly is the faithful one, or sometimes known as the Pieta. You know the Pieta in Rome, carved or sculptured by Michelangelo, and that refers to Mary as the faithful one. He can also tell us something what God is like. He respects human freedom. And that he first seeks Mary's consent before he proceeds with his plan. He also seeks our cooperation before he can work in and through us. He's not going to barge his way into anyone's life if you don't want him there. Christianity, as you know, is a divine human partnership. It's not God doing everything for us. He wants to use us to build up his kingdom on earth. And from the angel's point of view, the angel Gabriel, the angel Gabriel seemed to be shuttling back and forth from heaven an awful lot on the time of the birth of Jesus. The angel even appeared to Saint Joseph in a dream and told him not to be afraid to take Mary home as his wife. So, from the angel's standpoint, there's no arm twisting going on to force Mary's hand. Spirituality is about the free choices, merging our free choices, merging with God's overall plan for us. But our yes to God, like that of Mary's when she said, what, let what you have said be done to me, our yes must also be wholehearted. Our yes to God, however, didn't imply that it was all going to be plain sailing from a human point of view. Even though the angel addressed Mary as being highly favored, he said, you've won God's favor, it didn't mean that our faith wasn't going to be tested like our faith is tested at times, especially maybe during this pandemic. And the circumstances surrounding the baby's birth, Jesus' birth, proves that point. The highly favored Mary was left to give birth to Jesus in a stable where animals were housed for the winter. I think it was Pope Benedict who said that God allowed his son to be born in a stable in order to humble human pride, because it is pride that really keeps us from God. Now, if we were giving Mary advice, we would probably have strongly advised her not to leave Nazareth in the first place telling her in her state it would be insane to make that long trek to Bethlehem, which was 90 miles away, and there was no public transport then. We would have said that to her, but God's ways are not our ways. Mary said in her magnificent prayer, he has routed the proud of heart. Now the Christmas message of peace and goodwill can only find a home in the hearts of humble people, tried by suffering and setbacks. John the Baptist, he used more colourful language to drive home the same point. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain laid low. What does that mean as far as we're concerned? Well, we must allow the mountains of pride and arrogance and lust to be toppled and allow the valleys of our fears, hopelessness, depressions and despair 
to be filled in with healing, hope, faith and love. Then the words of John the Baptist will be actually personally fulfilled in us. The tyrant king, Herod, he brought Mary and Joseph a lot of grief as well when he sought to end the life of their newborn. But with God on their side, they outfoxed that wicked king. And so also do the three wise men. It's the same with us. God will turn everything to the advantage of those who love him, even when things initially don't go our way. He can write straight on crooked lines, as he did for Mary and Joseph. He can even turn the present awful pandemic to our advantage. So Mary's yes to God was never diluted from the day she first heard it, from the day she first uttered it, to when, as I said at the beginning, she stood at the foot of the cross. She will help elicit and reinforce our yes to God as well. As we approach the Feast of Christ's birth, we pour forth our hearts to him in prayer through, and through Mary's intercession, may we receive answers to our requests. Strengthen the bonds of our community. 
who healed his orphan spoke of the ravages of disease, and assist those who have skill and art and put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
when we eat this bread. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorials of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, will be called Emmanuel.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws even nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
And just to remind you that the masses for Christmas are Christmas Eve, there are two masses, one at five and the other at seven. Then Christmas Day, we have one at 9.30, and that's it. And don't forget there's an Advent reflection on the website, number four. And please, at the end of Mass, if you'd sit down and stay in your seat until the steward asks you to leave. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.